I'm here with John C. McGinley, incredible actor. He stars on TBS's Ground Floor. You've seen him in so many great movies. He's a great person, a great friend. John, thanks for being on the show, man. Thanks for helping me get through this. You're the best. You're doing a knockout job. Thanks. You know, they tell you uh, that it flies by. Are you going to do this? I'm going to do it in January. Does it, in fact, fly by? No. Well, the first time Rich it told doesn't. me he was going to do this in August, you're going to find follow Danny's show, uh, and I said, how much time? And he said, three hours. And my knees buckled because of the amount of content that is. Yeah, dude. Every day. Yeah. With I the mean, coconuts. Oh, he did not go there. <laughs> Uh-oh. It's a lot, dude. You know what? Ask him for a musical guest. You know what I never, got to, I never got to ask you? is uh, when I think about you, I think about you getting started with Will and & Grace and Third Watch, mm -hmm. you had a good run, you, what, you won an Emmy for uh, Will & Grace. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then you transitioned to doing movies, then you transitioned to doing plays. Yeah. Is there a big difference between those three formats? Yeah, I what think What is the is. difference? Um, for well, you. Well, for me, the plays, you know, and again, you're talking about like what you, how you, what you saw me do, right? So, but before all of that, I just did plays. I mean, I've done plays uh -huh. for so long. And for me, I just, I love rehearsing a play, man. I love it. I love rehearsing a play. I love getting close to a company. I love sort of all of us. I love the aspect of putting on a show. Um, and, then, and then when we get to perform it, I like that we are uninterrupted, that we get to tell an entire story. That, for me, is my favorite part of it, which you don't get to do in television and in movies. Um, it's really, funny you'd say uninterrupted, because... Um, I did Any Given Sunday with Al Pacino, who we did um, Glenn, Glenn Gary, Gary, Glenn yeah. Ross with on Broadway. And what, what he did with Oliver Stone, who directed uh, Any Given Sunday, was it was before there was um, high def uh, cards that you put into the camera. Still and there film? were eight, eight minute mags, which yeah. is about 1,100 feet of film. Yeah. And so Al would just have Oliver load up a huge mag and he'd just start doing repetition exercises and he didn't want to be interrupted. Don't call cut. He wanted to just do it 10, 15, 20 different ways, which is an editor's nightmare, but who cares? Yeah. Because you're going to find the nuggets from yeah. Al, and he would just like to repeat through it. So it's, it's kind of funny that you would say un uninterrupted, because yeah. that was his process doing any given Sunday. Well, you know, it's funny, because after we wrapped, I mean, after we closed the play about six months later, I got to do a movie with Al. Oh, that's right. Tell about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It comes out in March. It's what called is it? Danny Collins. And he's incredible. I saw the trailer. It looks great. It. Yeah, the trailer does look good. Um, he's really good in it. And I play his son. So it was amazing. And, and that, of course, we shot on high def. And he, um, and it was the same thing. Yeah, we would just run. We would just, he would just run. And he'd go like, let me do a few. Let me do a few. And, um, and, and yeah, we would run the, the whole scene and he's, he's, he's something else, man. He is really like, he's just a beast. He just gets after it. He goes after it every, every single day. Um, but, I find what happens a lot on different, mostly movie sets, sometimes TV sets, if you're shooting a single cam, we shoot Ground Floor, which is the show I'm doing now, yeah. which is on Tuesday nights on TBS yeah. at 10 o'clock. But on single cam, so there's just a single camera on you as opposed to a live four cameras, yeah. which you did on Will and Grace, yeah. uh, that the crew and the energy disperses after someone uses the word cut. Yeah. And so as soon as somebody calls cut, I immediately bark again. Just so you know, we're going again. And I don't want everyone getting to their cell phone or their computers. Yeah. I want to go again right now. Otherwise, you lose all this momentum. And maybe you had this great idea in something we just did. And you want to execute it right now. Yeah. And I want to stay in that. Yeah. Otherwise, well, on the way on your drive home, you're going to come up with all these great ideas, and then just be a pool of regret and frustration. I like to I like to exercise those demons in front of the lens. Yeah. I mean, I get torn sometimes about like the uh, the, the difference now between video and film. You know, like with film, with film you did you had a finite amount of film, right? So and they didn't like to burn film, you know, because film was expensive, and and so you know you kind of had to. You kind of had to know what you were doing. A director had to have a plan in place because you couldn't just burn film. And you had to come to the set with some ideas. Yeah, yeah. And now it just feels like, sometimes it feels like they just don't, they run the camera because they can, you know? And the director will come into the shot and say something to you and then go and back it out. Matter. And it doesn't And it doesn't matter. They can just keep running no the consequence. camera. There's nothing right. sort of special. There's nothing about like, you know, and we're going, you know, time to perform, time to... Uh, that that I, I'm, I'm kind of torn about sometimes, you know. Was it an e easy transition for you? I didn't realize you did so much theater before Third Watch and Will and Grace, but Will and Grace you shot live 
yeah. on Wednesday night, hypothetically, yeah. and in front of about 400 people. Yeah. Was that an easy transition for you? You know, easier than I thought it would be, actually. I mean, I remember, like, at first being a little jarred by the audience. Um, but then there, I, I think that theater does a good job of preparing you. I do, too. To shutting out the fourth wall. I do, too. You know, um, um, and so... I went right into ground floor after our run. Two months later, we did ground floor. And if there's such a thing as being in good live theater fighting shape, coming off Glen Gary, you're yeah. in pretty good live theater fighting shape. Yeah. And going right into shooting a live show in front of 400 people at yeah. Warner Brothers on Tuesday nights. I just felt like, let's go. I do agree with you about that, about being in, in I think doing theater does keep you in very, very good shape. If there is oh. such a thing, I, I, you, oh, you get in pretty good shape. You, you get in that sinking feeling? Yeah, what the hell? Just, Did you just break your chair? Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> what happened to the chair? Oh, short. Um, <laughs> hey, man, let's talk a little bit of football. Fire away. Uh, can, can, you, can you adjust it so it looks so, so small? Um, what happened to your chair? I don't know. It just, it just live theater. Know, whatever. Um, football. Let's talk about football, man, because I know you're a Giants fan. You have a special connection to the Giants. Why don't you tell everybody? My grandfather played on uh, the New York Giants in, uh, I think, 1925, and then it's sacrilege not to know the exact year. But he played for a year after being a Walter Camp All-American at the University of Pennsylvania, and he's in the College Football Hall of Fame in Atlanta, Georgia. And on his plaque, it cites him as being the original wedge buster. There, big handsome Irish he guy. He is a handsome About guy. 180 pounds. And he only played for one year for the Giants because he found he could make more money as a banker at the, the Beneficial Bank in Philadelphia and being a, uh, an assistant foot, football coach at St. Joe's in Philly than he could going up to uh, New York every Thursday. He'd go up from Thursday to Sunday, and then he'd be in Philly the rest of the time. And he just he wasn't making enough money. Wow. So he moved on to being uh, a banker in, uh, of some capacity at the Beneficial Bank in, uh, in Pennsylvania. In Philadelphia. So left the game on his own terms, probably didn't have the kind of salaries at all that they had. I back. don't know what he made, but I doubt it was more than $5,000. Wow. And okay. even if you prorate that, <laughs> it's squat. Yeah, right. Wow. And, um, and you still follow the Giants? You still root for the Giants? I bleed New York Giant blue. And what it's a that? thin year for us, but like I was talking to, uh, to Rich about uh, last time, I don't think the Giants are that many moving parts away from being an, at least an 8-8 eight and eight team. I think they're an offensive lineman, two de defensive backs, and as much as I like Jennings and that kid from uh, Boston College, they're one more back away from being at least 8-8. Eight and eight. Yeah. It, they, the, the, Giants, the, the, the Giants had the Cowboys in that game. It's, there are five games they could have won easily It's so weird to see, that, to see that defense be in such disarray. Like, I don't never really know what they're doing there. They have these rotating defensive strategies that I just cannot I don't know how much money follow. you spend on, on Jason Pierre-Paul. John, I got a question, because Brockman brought this up yesterday on the show. Eli Manning, how many more years does he have there? As a, as a guy that has won two Super Bowls for your team in your city, can he stay kind of as long as he wants, or at what, you, at what point? Years. What you, you say three and a half? Yeah. If it stays how much, like how long, this, how much longer is his contract? Hmm. Good question. But we, would you want to cut ties with Eli, say after this season? No. If, no way. Absolutely not. Nor okay. nor Tom Coughlin. I'm with We're you. Not that Johnny. many moving parts away from being. I'm with you. Competitive. I'm with you. I don't think Eli's the problem. I don't either. Let's remember too that like Vic, he's got no no Victor Cruz. I like Donnell. Is that his name? Uh, yeah, he's great, Larry. Larry, Larry, Larry and also the, the, the new kid Beckham, Beckham is just a superstar. Preston Parker could be something. Um, I, well, actually, the Giants aren't that many moving parts away. I'm I don't think anybody in the NFL is that many moving parts away. That parody is the best thing that ever happened. <laughs> the Jets are. No, not the, true. The not true. Jets are terrible. You, you bring, you bring uh, I don't know, do you sign the kid from Chicago in New York? Cutler. Yeah, I know, but who's he going to throw it to? Free agency and and move up in the draft. In the draft. I, I don't I don't know if you move up and get uh, the kid from Florida State. Uh, I I don't know. The Jets aren't that far away. Eli uh, signed through 2016. He becomes an unrestricted free I can, agent. I let then. that I let that that ride all the way through there. Eli's a winner, man. No question. Eli is a winner. Are you okay. a Jets or Giants guy? I'm a Jets guy, dude. I, believe I thought so. Jet Green. Um, okay, we're going to talk more about that um, when we come back. We're with Johnny C. McGinley uh, here on the Rich Eisen Show. I'm Bobby Cannavale. Come back. I'm sitting here with uh, Johnny C. McGinley, my good friend, my oldest friend, uh, Joe Latrulio, um, star of Fox's Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Johnny, of course, on TBS's Ground Floor, which is on Tuesday nights, John? Yes, sir. Yeah, and, and Brooklyn Nine-Nine is on Sunday Sundays, nights. 8.30. And 
beef uh, where you can catch um, <laughs> on iTunes. It destroys you guys Amazon. every time it comes up. It does. It does. <laughs> just, yeah. I feel so it's like a trap door. It's, it's yeah. really, well, it's a really good show, and, and I think we've probably Thank promoted you. it more than More than it ever, ever will be or ever could have expected. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and we were talking with John about, we were talking football, because this is a, uh, a football show, and we were talking about the Giants. John doesn't believe that the Giants are that many uh, pieces away. Let me ask you about, just real quick, a fun thing. Odell Beckham Jr. and that catch. Everybody's talking about how that was like the, maybe the greatest catch ever. I, I, I would argue that that, that that catch in the Super Bowl. Well, two catches. Mario Manningham's and yeah. the helmet and, catch. And the Tyree. The Tyree. And Tyree. Tyree. I would put Beckham third. You, you got to do it in the bottom of the ninth with the, with yeah. the bases loaded. That's a good point. Yeah. Athletically, greatest catch ever. Uh, situationally, number three. It yeah. was at the end of a, the, sec the first half of a losing effort uh, against the Cowboys. Yeah. What Manningham did with, with the throw that Eli did to Manningham in the Super Bowl and to, to David, to uh, Tyree. That's one of the most exciting plays in a Super no Bowl. No question. Uh, I mean, totally. after that scramble and Eli just that toss. Eli evades two guys. Eli, yeah. Eli the winner. Chuck's Incredible. Eli David the winner. catches it on his head. I mean, you know, everyone watching that game was like, holy! No question. Yeah. I, I mean, Well, because for a lot of us, for a lot of Giant fans, we, it, for a little while there, Eli was a China doll, and if you put a hand on him, he went down. Mm -hmm. That time he made it through two guys, Makes yeah. that throw, what was it, 35 yards? Wait, do, yeah. do you, are you just going to ignore all the holding that happened on that play? That yeah, allowed you got to remember, my, my friend Conrad Goody, who, was, who played for the Giants for five years and a two-time All-American at University of Missouri, uh, he said, if you want, and this is... Uh, you can call holding you on can call every holding play. on every single play. the blatant holding I don't have a play? problem with holding as much as I do what happened no to Notre Dame uh, in that game against, uh, against Florida, Florida State, State. Where you called uh, blocking on that wide receiver. That was baloney. Yeah, but he made a legitimate motion to do this. You could call it, in the NFL, you could call it Yeah, but when you're doing play. those rub routes, guys, like, pretend like they're running a route. They don't extend their arms to fully indicate that I they're know, but blocking. then it turns out that that D-back should have gotten an Academy Award for the way he was pushed by the Notre Dame guy. Yeah. John McGinley won. Coconut won zero. <laughs> <laughs> well, the scoreboard says that <clears throat> who was um, right. Um... Oh, God, you guys keep going. I, I'm, I'm kind of My tired of hearing myself is, speak. Does Harbaugh wind up in yeah. Ann Arbor? Oh, good, good <laughs> question, man. I, I, I got to say, I don't think I think that's that's a pretty good move for him. Or otherwise, what's the he going to do? Go coach the, the Raiders? Only, well, he's going to go coach the Raiders. There yes. that I'm not feeling is the pain in the ass factor of having to sit in living rooms right. every waking second of every free day to get uh, the next wide receiver and the next tackle and to come to Ann Arbor. We've talked a lot about that a lot on our show. There is a misconception in recent years with the NCAA and the rules, head coaches can't do that much recruiting. It's a lot on the assistants. Jim Morris said that too. So from where it was 10, 15 years ago, it's really kind of come down. But Jim Harbaugh is in a tough position here because he still has to speak with the media. Uh, he was asked actually yesterday about it. Uh, Mike has the sound. Why don't you go ahead and play? Offered a contract by University of Michigan. As you know, I mean, it's, I only talk about the, the the job that I have. We've we've been together a long time, and it's a long-standing policy. I missed it. So right. every 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 press conference he has, he's been asked about this now. Six, what was it? Six years, forty-eight. Six million? years, forty-eight million. I, I really think this is just a ploy to get more leverage with other NFL teams. I I see him coaching the Raiders next year. Boy, if 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 you're University of Michigan and all these kids are going to all these other schools right now, you are all in on Harbaugh, and that clock well, they is are. ticking. Yeah. Oh, so he hasn't accepted the contract. No, it was just an no, no, no. Okay. But he but still offer, has yeah. uh, two it. more weeks before. I mean, they still okay. have one more game after this weekend. I don't know. Oh, right, of course. Oh, right. You so guys, he can't do anything yet. Right. And you well, guys, grew he up. could give them an indication. He could quit, but he there's no indication that he's going to be fired. Everyone's just speculating that it's going to happen in San Francisco. Boy, how do you fire a guy? There must be some. There must be some backroom friction. Got to be a person. He's forty. NFC his... championship two years right. in a row, one Super Bowl, and I fire you. He's 43, 18 and one. His oh career my, record is gaudy. insane. It's gaudy. Yeah, so that's but this just, personality that's thing, man. If the players, if the players, if they can't work with him, it's like Mark right. Jackson in Golden State. You know, <laughs> yeah. that guy gets. Have fired? you ever had a director like that, Bobby? Where just you just butted heads with a guy? I haven't. John? No, no. No, I find the audition process is useful for that because when you're in a room, that, that microcosm that is those three or four or five minutes that is a traditional audition where you come in, read the scene with the person you're auditioning with, 
And uh, you, you, it's like an x-ray machine to the actors mm. and to the director. If he or she is interrupting and, and obtuse and, and, and rude, that's the way they're going to be for four months when you go to Buenos Aires and change your life to go shoot this movie. And so you get it out of your... I get it out of my system at the audition. And yeah. I invite them to also, because look, this is a big commitment. Hopefully, you're gonna be, you're gonna be digging into this thing and, and ringing it out for three or four months. And if, the, if you're not on the same frequency as, as the person who's gonna be hopefully yeah. molding this thing, it's gonna be a disaster. Hey, John. And it's your time you can't have back. Well, clearly, Harbaugh and them aren't on the same page, but going back to that, you guys kind of grew up in a, in a city. You're in New Jersey, so not that rural. I grew up in a college town, and I don't think I would, if I'm him, I would much rather coach college kids. You, you're, the lifestyle is not that of the NFL. NFL coaches are working 110 hours a week. Again, there are time limits, recruiting restrictions. Jim Moore, when he was on this week, said um, he can't do anything for the next month. He can't talk to any student, any kids. It's a non-recruiting period. So the quality of life is just that much more. Plus, you can kind of be a legend on the campus. The NFL now, it's tough to do anything. Plus, in college, years. you, the athlete, if I'm the head coach, you damn sure have to listen to me. You don't necessarily have to listen to me as a Pro Bowl player on the San Francisco 49ers. You have to listen to what I say and the way I'm coaching you at the college level. Do you think Harbaugh also likes that spotlight and, like, you know, the excitement of the NFL once that... Once yeah, but I think, I I think to be think, the head coach of Michigan is a, is a pretty, pretty heavy spot. I also think that well. Harbaugh likes that everyone's kind of clamoring over him right now. Is he yeah. younger than his brother? Is this like a younger brother thing? He is older, I believe. He's older? Plus, Boy, got I don't the best know about players. going to Oakland. I don't know about going to Oakland. He doesn't have to move. I know, but that, that just, you're, 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 you're advocating for not having lead in your ass, but not being <laughs> lazy. That can't be the motivator. I mean, this guy's a champion. <laughs> Yeah. Everywhere he's gone. Imagine if he could. Imagine, imagine if he Jets could. Guys? Hey, hey, let's bring him back. How about the Jets? The Jets? The Jets a better job. Better job than Oakland. Oh, I think so. Absolutely. Jets a better job. You think the Jet quarterback situation is better than Derek Carr? No, but you can solve quarterback situations. You can move up in the draft and either get Jameis Winston. You can get the guy from Chicago, who I don't hate, by the way. Uh, who else is available? What are the quarterbacks are available? I'm getting rid of everybody on the the Jets. The both quarterbacks. I'm getting rid of both of them. Mm -hmm. And I'm moving on. And then the Jets have a, the kid with the the the, uh, the tailback they have with the dreads is fantastic. That defense is fine. Ivory. Ivory is fantastic. Ivory He's is a pounder. Yeah. The Jets yeah. aren't that many parts away. They're not. Parity yeah. dictates that you're not that many moving parts away in the NFL anymore. Well, you can go from worst to first very easily. In, in the, the NFL, NFL, you can. In the NFL, you can very well, we'll easily. Be two Optimistic. and fourteen, or two and three, right? <sighs> we'll have a pretty good draft pick. Three. Hey, so we thought we won three. three games. Yeah, but you moved out of the Jameis Winston sweepstakes. That's true. We thought since we yeah. have a, a trio. Let's get Mel Gordon. Let's get we're, a running back. She's terrific. We thought since we have a trio of, of great actors up here, we'd go to some movies that are known for kind of great trios um, and infamous roles, uh, and place you three in them, and then who would play which role within that movie. Okay. All right. So the first one, very well-known movie, Three Amigos, Steve Martin, Chevy Chase, Martin Short. Which one of you guys is playing Lucky Day, who's Dusty Bottoms, and who's Ned Nederlander? I'm the short guy, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the, uh, I'm, I think Johnny's in charge. Yeah, I agree. Johnny's, Johnny's Chevy, With right? With the charisma, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you're, well, you're Marty Martin. Short. Yeah, I think I'd be Marty. Yeah. Martin. I like that casting. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's no debating? We thought there would be maybe some I like some that debate. casting. I'll wear a good sombrero. Wow. They, right, just, well, they well, agreed right one, to it. This one, you guys may, may have some debating. Ferris Bueller's Day Off, a classic, right? Yeah. Who is going to play Ferris? Yeah. Who's Cameron? <laughs> and who's Sloan? Oh, I have some opinions about this. Um, <laughs> please, please, pray tell. Good. Let him out. I think uh, I think Joey's playing um, Ferris. Sloan. I think you're oh, playing Joey. the chick because you guys are so beautiful. <laughs> uh, and I'll play the Red Wings guy out of deference to Chelly. <laughs> <laughs> the Red Wings guy. Um, Mr. Alan Ruck. He's yeah. wearing a Gordy House Alan. sweater. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know how you beat that. I'll, unless I'll, you're going to go, you guys are interchangeable, but you're. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, we could switch that off. I look uh, pretty good in a wig, so you know, I, I can go, I can go back and forth. Yeah, yeah. So Joe, I don't mind you playing Sloan. Sloan. Why? You guys yeah. are great. You'd be I don't great. Mind playing yeah. Sloan. Yeah. Why would you? You'd be fantastic. Sloan. Okay, we, a have, wonder, we have one last one. We're going to bring it back to the world we're in here, the NFL, <laughs> the triplets, the fame triplets: Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith, Michael Irvin. 
of you three, who's who? I'm Michael Irvin. Ooh. So you're the playmaker. I'm, I'm who do you want to be, Joey? I'll, I'll, I'm Smith. I, I, I'm I'll Troy. be Troy. I'll, I'll yeah. just yeah. give you. Joey, yeah, you, you don't have to be the shortest guy every time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I know. I just, <laughs> it's like a fantasy. I just, no, that's, no, that's you know? The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience. <laughs>